Hey guys, what is up today? I have the most random haul for you. I have some ColourPop makeup, some Ulta makeup, and also some candles, which are going to be from a place I guarantee you probably never even considered. And also um, some food because I get hungry. Uh, if you are interested in some randomness and just kind of listen to me blather on while I try some new stuff that's not necessarily brand new to the market, but new to me, stick around because we are getting into it. Why do I do that? Like, what's... Just watch. You guys ever use a mattifying face product and then get annoyed because your face looks too matte? Yeah. So I went in with the Ulta mattifying face primer and I did a little bit of my cream bronzer and now I'm gonna try the ColourPop Cheek Dew. Mine is in the shade Starfruit. This is not a new product, it's fairly new to me. Um, I feel like I tried this one time and wasn't a huge fan. So I'll show you what this looks like here. It's super sheer. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. I guess I just felt like maybe it was a little too orangey tone for me. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm gonna take my damp sponge here and go in with it and just see what it looks like. How are we doing? Well, I mean, it's putting a little color on there, but if that's the best thing I can say about it. That's a lot. I feel like I, I can't tell if this is my discoloration here or if this is a buildup of the product, but it's not even. I know I just don't know. I don't I don't know. All right, we're gonna let that dry down and I'll probably go over the top of that with um something else because I'm just I'm just not overly impressed with that. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily the product, though. I think it's just that I chose the wrong color. However, I will say I like more and more, the older I get, I like cream products. And I feel like this one is just almost just too much straight up liquidy. So that's that. I also have new to show you. This is the Ulta Mattifying Eye Primer. So I have used the Ulta primer that has a tint to it, a pink tint. And let's just do a comparison of what that looks like. All right, so here we go. So this is the pink. And this is, again, just an eye primer, right? But it's gonna give you some nice shimmer underneath what you're wearing. And then the nude is just completely blending into the skin. So I do like the shimmer one. I've tried it before and just used it as um, a nice long wearing eyeshadow. So I have high hopes for this. I think this will be fine. I can say already a little goes a long way. It feels pretty tacky pretty quick. All right, so I had to go get a rag to wipe that stuff off with. So feels like it's gotten tacky nice and quick. So we are going to go in with, I think I'm gonna try, I got, well, let's go with this one. I have a couple of new eyeshadow palettes, but I like this uh, ColourPop Like a Virgo, mainly because I am a Virgo. Um, beautiful colors. Look at that. Huh? I don't think I've even, I know I haven't worn this in a look yet. I'm not even sure I've swatched it yet. So let's do that. Yeah, I think I have. I'm going to do that here for you guys, though, so you can see what we're dealing with. Huh? Isn't that nice? This is, this is really pretty. It's um, almost changing in its dimension in the light. It's like the MAC blue black eye pigment, maybe a little more of a pinkish purple sheen to it though, but it's really pretty. I'm excited to try that on. I can't wait to show you guys some of the other things I have. It's super random. It's like like I even have some food, I have candles. This is gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. All right, so let's go in with, we're gonna go in with this 
nice pink in the crease. I'm just kind of taking a, a small round brush. Look at how much picks up on there, right? Tapping it off. I know how color pop eyeshadows behave, so I'm not surprised that this is going on nice and smooth, and I would also like to think that the shadow primer underneath it is helping with that too. A little more on there, tap it off. Other side. If you feel like you have a hard time with your shadow not going on evenly, change the way you are holding your brush. Mess around with it because different angles provide different results. I am not a makeup artist, so I can't tell you the hows and whys behind that, but it's true, so play around with it. There's nothing that says that you have to hold it a certain way, even down to coming at it from above to where you're holding it on the brush. Here at the end, towards the middle. Okay, and then I'm just bringing it down onto the outer corner of my lid. Looks nice and wild right now, right? Like I've got a raging case of pink eye. I'm just gonna take a clean, large brush and then go over the edges of that just to help blend. All I'm doing is back and forth blending at the edges. Makes for a lot less harsh lines. Okay, I just kind of stop and look at what I'm doing, make sure I'm, everything's going on evenly, and so far so good. So now I'm going to take oh, an even smaller, more narrow brush, and I'm going to go into this brown shade and just kind of tap the edges again. Look how nicely that picks up on there. Color pop. Shadows just perform so well. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this in the corner and start working my way up into the crease. And I'm going to blend it out and clean it up a bit more with that same big brush that I used to blend out the edges of that pink. Too much on there. Okay, so now I'm taking that same big brush that I used to blend the edges of the pink and I'm going to blend this brown into the pink in my crease. I want to bring some of this pink actually onto my eyelid. I probably could have just done this at the beginning, but I wasn't thinking this is what I was going to do, and I just changed my mind. So, inner half of the eyelid. And then I'm going to take, with my fingertip, I'm going to go into that pretty... Gosh, I wish that picked up nicer on there. If you could really see the pigment there. Taking a little bit on my fingertip, and I'm just dabbing over the color that's on the lid. And a little goes a long way with this too. Oh, that's very pretty. I'm gonna use the same finger over here. I'm not even re-dipping, I don't need to. No, I did get a little wild and go over, went over uh, a lot of the brown and I'm gonna touch that up with just some, some more brown because when all else fails, you should just add more, right? I'm kidding, that's not what you should do. So I'm just taking a tiny little bit. I probably didn't even really need to dip back in there, but I just want to emphasize that's what's in the corner here is this nice matte brown. It's not the sparkle. The sparkle is for, <laughs> sparkle, how old am I? The sparkle is for the center and inner corner of the lid, right? Okay, so I'm taking my big brush again, going right back over the edge. I don't want to get that shimmery shade, the sparkle, up 
into my crease and up on that brow bone. Now we're gonna take a little bit of the shimmery white that's in here, just a tiny little bit on the inner corner. And I'm just gonna kind of fade it out into the shimmery brown. I'm gonna bring it down on the little inner corner highlight here too. ColourPop shadows, their shimmer shades do kind of get a little bit everywhere. So you might have to go in and clean up a little bit when you're gonna do something like that. All right, so let's put some brows on and some eyeliner on and bring this look together. Cause right now it's a little crazy. So I also have the ColourPop Feather Effect Brow Pen. It's in blonde, right? It's in a blonde shade. And I feel like I don't get much um, of anything from this. Let me show you what I mean here. See, tiny little bit there, tiny little line. But if I really press down, Maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know. Let's try it in the brows and see. Let's see what happens, huh? I'm just gonna brush through them, kind of get things in order, and let's see what this looks like. So, it's red. It's one of these like random things that looks blonde shades that go on red. Do you see what I mean? Ooh, I don't like. All right, so we're going to take that off and just go in with one of my tried and true because I do need to leave the house and not look like a maniac today. Wrong shade. Any red that heads out there want that? Let me know. That's going in my um, Project Beauty Share drawer because there's just... Because just... can't. Somebody else can. Here I am dealing with like an overly crowded drawer and I just want to tell you that I went to the container store the other day and I got two of these for lipstick organization and two of these for general drawer organization. I'm sorry that bag was probably really really loud. Anyway, I'm excited to go through and start getting some of my stuff, my stuff more squared away with this drawer because it's out of control. I should probably do like some sort of declutter, but I'm not really a declutter video person. I don't know. What do people like about declutter videos? Like, I don't mind giving it a shot and filming while I go through and maybe I guess talking about my process of elimination for um, lipsticks because I have too many and they need to go, but... I'm just not, it's just not really my thing. So if it's something you'd be interested in, let me know. So here I started and I didn't even mention what I was using. This is the, um, oh crap, I'm the wrong cap on the wrong end. This is the Benefit um, Precisely My Brow in Blonde. Definitely a more um, reliable for my brows. I think part of the reason I don't do a lot of like pinks or reds uh, in my eyeshadow routine, and this is super random, I'm just thinking to mention this, is because not only do I always feel like it makes it look like I do really truly have pink eye, um, but it's this redness that I have in my skin. It's always been there. Um, and I guess I feel like it emphasizes it. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm gonna go in over that on my brows with a little bit of the NYX Thick It Stick It. I will link this video up here trying this because this is a awesome, awesome product. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happens with this, but I do usually get a little bit on my eyelids too. I don't know why. Eyelids, eyes, eyes, this, this, not my lids up here. 
don't think I have a new liner. Let me see. Oh, yes. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. So this is the ColourPop Tinkerbell. And this liner, I remember, I think I've tried this. This is in Lost Girl. And I like this online because it looked like a sparkly brown type. But it goes on kind of gold. So it, it's not bad. I'm going to do a little bit of it in like a big line now. You can see I've already messed around with it and tried it and um, it needs sharpened already. Y'all, I have a mascara video coming soon because this is out of control. All right, so I'm taking my Anastasia and going in here because this is just a pencil. See, so now I've got this nice sharp line. Is it just me or am I the only one who, when brands started doing this with um, eyeliners where they were putting them so that they weren't crank up, but they're in this plastic. So it almost seemed like it was wrong to sharpen them like that. It's not, it's okay, you can do it. Honestly, I mean, it left a little bit of a light. You can tell I have eyeliner on on this eye and not this one, but not much. So I'm still going to hit it with my go-to Neutrogena liquid liner. I do not normally do mascara on the lower lashes, but I think because I've got this out and I'm playing with it, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of this down here and some mascara down there today too. It's just not... It's not like knocking my socks off, okay? It's just not. Uh, I am going to take one of my skinny, skinny, tiny little brushes here, right? An eyeliner brush. And I'm going to go over what I just did. And especially underneath here. It spreads nicely. Let's go in with my Physicians Formula. I'm sorry, no, yes, no. Did I say Neutrogena? I did. It's the Physicians Formula. Phenomenal. And I'm gonna do just a real thin line over what I just did. I saw some, um, I don't know, makeup tip or something here recently where they talked about doing a smoky eye layering two different eyeliners. Have you guys done that? I'm going to try it. So you would go in with like a brown, make a wide thick line with the brown, and then go over that with a small thin line of black, and then go take a shadow brush and kind of smoke it out. I don't know. Something to try. Okay, I do know I do not have any new like brand yeah I do have a ton of brand new ones but new to try today okay we're going in with the Lancome the Lancome Lashy Doll Mascara I know I can rely on this something about this brush does a nice job on the lower lashes I usually have to use uh, a different mascara for lower lashes but I think it's I guess it's just because it's condensed and it's rubber bristles and it's not like super big and voluminous so it's not making a mess everywhere but it goes on really nice moving on what else do I have to show you I also got two other things from Ulta that I wanted to try this is a velvet matte lip crayon from Ulta and they didn't put the name of it on the uh, tube so okay let's see what this looks like do i still have other stuff on here no okay oh that's a pretty pink let's see how that goes on It's a pretty pink. It's not a shade I would normally wear. And I feel like it's clashing with what I got going on in my eyes. You would think that the pink would bring out, like th these would look nice together. They would complement, but um, I don't know. 
Either way, I also got a this Ulta Jelly Gloss. Also doesn't have a shade. Did I mention that these Ulta things that I'm using came in a, um, you know, like those little, if you buy so many dollars worth of makeup or product or whatever like around Christmas, they send you a gift bag free full of a bunch of their products. That's where I got all this. Okay, not bad. Okay, I feel like I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? From the looks of it, that it's not 1989 anymore. Okay, so let's move into a couple of the other things. This has to go to the grocery store, so I shouldn't probably exaggerate it with any more stuff. So did you guys, okay, speaking of 1989, do you guys remember cinnamon teddy grams? You can't find them in the stores anymore, but you can get them in multi-packs on Amazon. Hmm. I mean, you're gonna buy a case of them, but this was a trip down memory lane. So delicious. My husband and my son are devouring them, so I have to make sure that I hide a bag from myself, otherwise I won't get to try any of them. And then something else, I will link these, the link for Amazon on there below um, where you can buy those. And something else I'm going to link for you. This is so random. Who's familiar with Hungry Girl, right? You know, uh, the Hungry Girl podcast? Does anybody listen to that? One of her employees, Jamie Goldberg, makes candles. And I could not decide on which one I wanted to try because I love getting candles and all the different scents and stuff. So I bought, um, I think five. And I've already burned through one that was lavender vanilla really nice but I also got I'm gonna just show them to you I just got tea lights so I could sample a bunch of different scents right so this one has not been burned yet this is citrus and agave oh it's so nice it smells like when you're walking into a fancy hotel in like the southwest somewhere like Arizona it is so nice love it that's citrus agave I also got mm, honeysuckle jasmine these I haven't burned yet so Nice and flowery, um, probably not my favorite, but nice regardless. And then this one is rosemary and sage. This is so good. This is like, um, I don't know, I feel like this is walking into an expensive clothing filled closet for an, a, a distinguished like older lady. I don't know. I don't know somehow yes rosemary and sage that's a good one and then sea salt and sunshine it's amazing how they get something that actually i should probably show you each of those that actually smells like salt like did you know salt even has a smell salt and jasmine very nice so this was um the a candle sample set and this is a little card that came with it explaining it. Like she makes these candles at home. And um, I guess there were seven in this. And apparently I've burned three. So love these. They are basically uh, just little tea lights though. So I would say if you're going to burn one to really enjoy and appreciate the scent um, from something of this size, you would want to do it like in the bathroom or if you have a small kitchen, these would be nice and just fun to try different scents, right? I love the Hungry Girl podcast. I feel like she has some of the best ideas for food preparation that I would never have thought of on my own. So I had fun um, supporting her podcast and buying that. So I've been wanting to tell you guys about those two and I'll again link that down below in case you're interested in checking any of those out. So that's it. That's it for today, guys. That's I can't possibly cram anything else in here. And I had to go grocery shopping, so I'm gonna go. But thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.